So we've got uh, the two sections that are arranged geographically, and I talked about the reference collection. The online catalog, we've got eight terminals out here in the main reading room. We've got two terminals in the microfilm room. That is because no matter how much research you do before you get here, you can stay up all night long and look at the card catalog and search it and come up with all sorts of stuff. Inevitably, once you get here, you're going to discover, oh, this thing that I found is awesome. These three things are not worth my time. But this thing, I want to know if you have more stuff like this. And so you'll talk to the reference archivist and they'll say, oh, OK, well, this collection, what I might do is search on these words and, uh, and or look for things from this particular place in Ohio. Because a lot of our manuscript collections, the subject headings that are used for them are place names and people names. Um, let me give you um, one of my best examples of why, why it, every manuscript collection is so hard to use. Um, and it's probably one of the biggest um, comments that, uh, that um, Betsy and her staff get when people do have to try and find something in a primary source collection. Let's use the example of the Christmas cards you got last year, or the holiday cards you got last year to be politically, more politically correct. OK, so maybe everybody got some through the mail holiday cards last year. So you put them in a shoe box, so you put them in a big bowl. My parents kept theirs in a bread bowl out on the top of the um, counter right inside the front door. Um, and, and you just keep adding to the pile. Maybe you slit the envelopes. Maybe you do that all on the same day. You kind of put all the Christmas cards to one side, and then on Saturday afternoon, you sit there, and you've got some time while you're watching television. So you open up all the Christmas cards. And you read through them, and some people you can picture them. You pull open the Christmas card and it's from, you know, like all the business people in, the, in, the, in your community and they send you a Christmas card that, you know, Merry Christmas from your dentist, Merry Christmas from your, your pet store, Merry Christmas from your veterinarian, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then you also have the friends who just, you know, they get the generic Christmas card and they sign their name to it and they put it in the mail and, you know, they feel good about it because they got it out like the day after Thanksgiving. Then you get the people who spend a little bit more time and they're the ones who actually write you the note. You know, um, uh, it was so nice to see you in, Janu in July at such and such pig roast. You know, wasn't that so much fun? And I ran into so and so in New York City on, in September when I was there on a business trip. And um, we were talking about so and so, and I heard she had a baby, and blah, blah, blah. So there, there's also a little bit of news in each one. Then you get the true overachievers. You get the ones who stick in those letters um, that they wrote on the word processor that have like, you know, um, these are all the things we did this year. These are all the places we went on vacation. This is what the dog did. This is what, you know, um, everyone in our neighborhood did and so on and so forth. And it's like a two page list and it's, it's all the information you never wanted to know about that particular family, okay? And then you've got the ones where the Christmas card is actually the picture of them in Hawaii on vacation, so you can feel doubly bad that not only did you not get to go to Hawaii this year, but you certainly don't look that good in a bikini. So you know, you've got that, you've got that whole visual record, OK? The generic name of the collection, my Christmas card collection. You might, if you get them every year, say, these are Christmas 2007. These are Christmas 2006, these are Christmas 2005, and so on and so forth. You might just dump them all in that shoebox and put it on the shelf, and that's as organized as you're going to get. However, depends. Each one of you is going to be different. Some of you might put all the photograph cards together so that because you know I want to look at the pictures and I want to I really would prefer not to think about her in that bathing suit. But at any rate, I you know I'm going to keep those all together. And all those long Christmas card letters, those those long um, every everything letters, I'm going to put those all together because they've got lots of good information. And um, you know the the cards where everyone just signed it, I'm just going to shove those at the back of the pile. I'm not really interested in them. They don't have a whole lot of information. So that might be how you organize your Christmas card, but it's going to be different for each one of you. And that's why manuscript, and uh, uh, to some degree, that's why manuscript collections are that way. Okay, so can anybody think of the subject headings for this particular manuscript collection? You might have a, a generic description part that says, you know, Christmas cards received by Louise Jones um, between uh, November 23rd and, um, let's be honest, February 13th of um, 2000, uh, 2007, um, 
and uh, describing um, family and friends events for the previous year. So that's your sort of generic. But really, if you wanted to get into sort of the study of how Americans are spending their leisure time, and where, you know, what are people, where are people going on vacation? What are people doing with their free time? Are they traveling? Um, are they doing, what kind of traveling are they doing? Are they leaving the country? It's the year after, like, let's pretend it's 2002. Let's compare. In 2001, did everybody go on foreign trips? And in 2002, everybody stayed at home. Why would that have been? Anybody have an idea? 9-11, exactly. So if you wanted to look at how 9-11 affected individual families, that might be a way of getting at it. I mean, you could certainly get articles in newspapers, and I'm sure somebody at some point is going to write a dissertation on the topic and so on and so forth. But if you wanted real living examples of how 9-11 affected real people, I'd go for the Christmas card collections and I'd compare. Well, the year, for the three years before, they went really cool places. I mean, they went to Mayan ruins one year and they went to Greece the next. And they went to San Diego in 2002? What's that about? Well, San Diego was pretty safe. It's a naval base. You know, <laughs> you're surrounded by guys in uniforms. I'd go there in a minute, but you know, <laughs> um, it might not, have, might not have fit. But again, that's, that's one of those clues. There's no subject heading for that. There's no way we could possibly, the Library of Congress hasn't even conceived of the subject heading for that. But if you came up to the reference desk and said, okay, I want to look at the change in behavior of people's vacations. How, you know, how did 9-11 affect families? How did, it, how did it affect people, real people? One of my staff would probably troubleshoot with you. It's called a reference interview. We'd probably sit there and say, well, what do you mean by real people? Well, what do you mean by change their behavior? You mean like, do they go away on vacation? Well, wow, I'd look at our Christmas card collection. And we'd hope that somebody gave us their Christmas card collection for that time period, because that would be how we would get you in touch with that collection. So it's kind of a two-part process. We have to go out and get the collections that are going to answer the questions you're going to have in about 10 years. Um, and then you have to think about all the different ways you can ask those questions for us to then come up with the collections to get at you. Okay, so enough about that, but I just wanted to give you an idea as to why it's somewhat bewildering when you come up with a question, why my staff sit there and go, well, okay, it's a great, it's a great idea, but what, what, do you, what do you think would help us answer, help you answer that question? So that, that's why we end up asking you dozens of questions about that.